Site-specific recombination, also known as conservative site-specific recombination, is a type of genetic recombination in which DNA strand exchange takes place between segments possessing at least a certain degree of sequence homology. Enzymes known as site-specific recombinases perform rearrangements of DNA segments by recognizing and binding to short, specific DNA sequences, at which they cleave the DNA backbone, exchange the two DNA helices involved, and rejoin the DNA strands. In some cases the presence of a recombinase enzyme in the recombination sites is sufficient for the reaction to proceed, in other systems a number of accessory proteins and or accessory sites are required. Many different genome modification strategies, among these recombinase-mediated cassette exchange, an advanced approach for the targeted introduction of transcription units into predetermined genomic loci, rely on SSRs. Site-specific recombination systems are highly specific, fast, and efficient, even when faced with complex eukaryotic genomes. They are employed naturally in a variety of cellular processes, including bacterial genome replication, differentiation and pathogenesis, and movement of mobile genetic elements. For the same reasons, they present a potential basis for the development of genetic engineering tools. Recombination sites are typically between 30 and 200 nucleotides in length and consist of two motifs with a partial inverted repeat symmetry to which the recombinase binds, and which flank a central crossover sequence at which the recombination takes place. The pairs of sites between which the recombination occurs are usually identical, but there are exceptions. Figure. 1. Tire recombinases, details of the crossover step. Top, traditional view including strand exchange followed by branch migration. The mechanism occurs in the framework of a synaptic complex including both DNA sites in parallel orientation. While branch migration explains the specific homology requirements and the reversibility of the process in a straightforward manner, it cannot be reconciled with the motions recombinase subunits have to undergo in three dimensions. Bottom, current view. Two simultaneous strand swaps, each depending on the complementarity of three successive bases at the edges of the 8BP spacer. Didactic complications arise from the fact that, in this model, the synaptic complex must accommodate both substrates in an anti-parallel orientation. This synaptic complex arises from the association of two individual recombinase subunits with the respective target site. Its formation depends on interprotomer contacts and DNA bending, which in turn define the subunits with an active role during the first crossover reaction. Both representations illustrate only one half of the respective pathway. These parts are separated by a holiday junction slash isomerization step before the product can be released. Figure 2. Ser recombinases the subunit rotation pathway. Contrary to tire recombinases, the four participating DNA strands are cut in synchrony at points staggered by only 2 BP. Subunit rotation permits the exchange of strands while covalently linked to the protein partner. The intermediate exposure of double strand breaks bears risks of triggering illegitimate recombination and thereby secondary reactions. Here, the synaptic complex arises from the association of preformed recombinase dimers with the respective target sites. Like for tire recombinases, each site contains two arms, each accommodating one protomer. As both arms are structured slightly differently, the subunits become conformationally tuned and thereby prepared for their respective role in the recombination cycle. Contrary to members of the tire class the recombination pathway converts two different substrate sites to site hybrids. This explains the irreversible nature of this particular recombination pathway, which can only be overcome by auxiliary recombination directionality factors. Based on amino acid sequence homologies and mechanistic relatedness, most site-specific recombinases are grouped into one of two families, the tyrosine recombinase family or serine recombinase family. The names stem from the conserved nucleophilic amino acid residue present in each class of recombinase which is used to attack the DNA and which becomes covalently linked to it during strand exchange. The earliest identified members of the serine recombinase family were known as resolvices or DNA invertices, while the founding member of the tyrosine recombinases, lambda phage integrase, differs from the now well-known enzymes such as CRE and FLP. Famous serine recombinases include enzymes such as gamma delta resolvus, TN3 resolvus, and phi C31 integrase. Although the individual members of the two recombinase families can perform reactions with the same practical outcomes, the families are unrelated to each other, having different protein structures and reaction mechanisms. 
Unlike tyrosine recombinuses, serine recombinuses are highly modular, as was first hinted by biochemical studies and later shown by crystallographic structures. Knowledge of these protein structures could prove useful when attempting to re-engineer recombinase proteins as tools for genetic manipulation. Recombination between two DNA sites begins by the recognition and binding of these sites, one site on each of two separate double-stranded DNA molecules, or at least two distant segments of the same molecule, by the recombinase enzyme. This is followed by synapsis, I, E, bringing the sites together to form the synaptic complex. It is within this synaptic complex that the strand exchange takes place, as the DNA is cleaved and rejoined by controlled transesterification reactions. During strand exchange, each double-stranded DNA molecule is cut at a fixed point within the crossover region of the recognition site. Releasing a deoxyribose hydroxyl group, while the recombinase enzyme forms a transient covalent bond to a DNA backbone phosphate. This phosphodiester bond between the hydroxyl group of the nucleophilic serine or tyrosine residue conserves the energy that was expended in cleaving the DNA. Energy stored in this bond is subsequently used for the rejoining of the DNA to the corresponding deoxyribose hydroxyl group on the other DNA molecule. The entire reaction therefore proceeds without the need for external energy-rich cofactors such as ATP. Although the basic chemical reaction is the same for both tyrosine and serine recombinases, there are some differences between them. Tyrosine recombinases, such as CRE or FLP, cleave one DNA strand at a time at points that are staggered by 6,8 BP, linking the three end of the strand to the hydroxyl group of the tyrosine nucleophile. Strand exchange then proceeds via a cross-strand intermediate analogous to the holiday junction in which only one pair of strands has been exchanged. The mechanism and control of serine recombinases is much less well understood. This group of enzymes was only discovered in the mid-1990s and is still relatively small. The now classical members Gamma Delta and TN3 resolve us, but also new additions like Phi C31, BXB1, and R4 integrases, cut all four DNA strands simultaneously at points that are staggered by 2 BP. During cleavage, a protein DNA bond is formed via a transesterification reaction, in which a phosphodiester bond is replaced by a phosphoserine. Bond between a 5-phosphate at the cleavage site and the hydroxyl group of the conserved serine residue. Figure 3a. Reversible insertion and excision by the CRE LOX system. Figure 3b. Inversion by the CRE LOX system. It is still not entirely clear how the strand exchange occurs after the DNA has been cleaved. However, it has been shown that the strands are exchanged while covalently linked to the protein, with a resulting net rotation of 180 degrees. The most quoted model accounting for these facts is the subunit rotation model. Independent of the model, DNA duplexes are situated outside of the protein complex, and large movement of the protein is needed to achieve the strand exchange. In this case the recombination sites are slightly asymmetric, which allows the enzyme to tell apart the left and right ends of the site. When generating products, left ends are always joined to the right ends of their partner sites, and vice versa. This causes different recombination hybrid sites to be reconstituted in the recombination products. Joining of left ends to left or right to right is avoided due to the asymmetric overlap sequence between the staggered points of top and bottom strand exchange, which is in stark contrast to the mechanism employed by tyrosine recombinases. The reaction catalyzed by CRE recombinase, for instance, may lead to excision of the DNA segment flanked by the two sites, but may also lead to integration or inversion of the orientation of the flanked DNA segment. What the outcome of the reaction will be is dictated mainly by the relative locations and orientations of the sites that are to be recombined, but also by the innate specificity of the site-specific system in question. Excisions and inversions occur if the recombination takes place between two sites that are found on the same molecule. And if the sites are in the same or in an opposite orientation, respectively. Insertions, on the other hand, take place if the recombination occurs on sites that are situated on two different DNA molecules, provided that at least one of these molecules is circular. Most site-specific systems are highly specialized, catalyzing only one of these different types of reaction and have evolved to ignore the sites that are in the wrong orientation. Thanks for watching.